I'm Mark Lorenzato. We're going to talk about gout. Gout commonly presents as an inflamed, swollen, painful joint in the foot between the great toe and the long metatarsal, the long bone in the foot on the toe side. That joint can become inflamed, swollen, red, tender, painful. Other joints can be involved. It's typically a joint that's colder. Gout is, for many people, a measure of an oxidative stress phenomena. It is it happens when a person eats poorly, frequently sets themselves up for what's called metabolic syndrome, a tendency to high blood pressure, a tendency towards insulin resistance and diabetes, a tendency to abdominal obesity, and a tendency to create a vascular injury leading to heart attack, dementias, and strokes. So much of gout is preventable. Not all gout is. Some individuals have SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms, which represent mutations in their DNA that predispose them to gout. Gout is related to high uric acid levels in the joints where, they, where the uric acid can form crystals when it is concentrated. Maintaining a uric acid level that is not elevated can be one of the primary ways of managing gout. So, as we go forward, I highly recommend a nutritional tune-up and evaluation to see if you are eating properly. Frequently, people embrace a cultural norm that is counterproductive for their own health. That's another topic. We'll proceed focused on gout. So, yeah, high uric acid levels can be in joints. And if we find a joint, if I find a joint that I suspect may be infected, frequently I'll take some fluid out. Otherwise, to make the diagnosis of gout, generally do not have to remove fluid from a joint. We may get a uric acid level in the bloodstream. And generally, just the presentation in an individual will suggest gout in a strong way. Associated with gout are other illnesses, as I mentioned, some from metabolic syndrome, but also ones that result from kidney malfunction. People with gout have a higher risk of some types of kidney stones. The biochemistry of gout is related to elevated purines. Purines are a group of molecules that, are, that form one of the bases for your DNA and RNA. It is thought, for instance, in sleep apnea, when people do not perfuse tissue well, they have increased oxidation without oxygen, resulting in higher uric acid levels from breakdown of these products. Also, certain foods in some individuals will lend towards gouty attacks because of high purine levels. Clearly, some things are beneficial. People who drink coffee have a lower risk of gouty attacks. Higher vitamin C can lower gouty attacks. In general, avoiding alcohol will lower the likelihood of a gout attack. In a subgroup of individuals who have gout, there is a genetic predisposition such that they should avoid certain foods in excess, meat, certain rich meats of like liver and kidney particularly, legumes, uh, including lentils, garbanzos, and such. And a selection of vegetables can all be highly contributory to high purine levels. Excessive fructose intake, clearly high fructose corn syrup, which is common in soft drinks and many added to many processed foods, will contribute to uh, the problem of gout. It is possible that arginine as a supplement is beneficial in promoting microcirculation and can alleviate some of the symptoms of gout. The omega-3 to omega-6 ratio of fatty acids, of essential fatty acids, can influence the amount of inflammation in any individual. Unfortunately, in the United States, we tend to have a lower omega-3 to omega-6 ratio because we have plentiful omega-6s in corn oil, soy oil, safflower, sunflower, cottonseed, partially because we fry foods and because we add those to other foods where we tend to have a deficiency of our omega-3 DHA, which is found in fatty fish and in range-fed animals. In someone with gout without an underlying cause and a genetic predisposition, we have to be concerned of possible lead exposure damaging the kidneys or other exposure damaging the kidney, kidneys, such as diabetic nephropathy, the end result of uncontrolled diabetes to the kidneys, hypertensive nephropathy, the end result of un uncontrolled high blood pressure to the kidneys. It is important to review all the medications you're on as some medications contribute to higher uric acid levels. In the differential diagnosis of gout, we must concern with possible transient 
inflamed joint that is secondary to immune trigger from a gastrointestinal illness, usually one to three weeks prior to the attack. This is termed enteropathic arthritis and can happen after any infection, but particularly more common in gut infections. Laboratory analysis, uric acid levels can be checked following an attack and otherwise to get a baseline. The SED rate or erythro erythrocyte sedimentation rate is used to define the severity of an inflammatory process in an attack frequently or to make a comparison between a gouty attack and a suspected um, infection. Evaluation of underlying diseases including a hemoglobin A1C which is, looks at the average blood sugar for 120 days and gives a good indication of the relative amount of oxidative stress as does the lipid transport analysis what people term the cholesterol panel, but is actually an analysis of the fat carrying in the bloodstream, the lipid profile, the types of molecules that are packaged and how they're packaged to take fat through the bloodstream. Looking at your kidney function through blood by looking at the BUN creatinine level or blood urea nitrogen creatinine level is important. This is part of the comprehensive metabolic panel, which will also allow us to look at liver functions and electrolyte balance. A urinalysis in a person with gout or high uric acid levels will frequently show monosodium urate crystals. And as I said, if we need to, we can take a joint aspirate to see what is involved and if there's bacteria, but more likely to validate that this is not pseudogout, not a different type of crystal, but a uric acid crystal. Basic medical management includes dietary changes if you fall into the spectrum of individuals that and perhaps 75% of people do, that are related to too much starch with not enough fat-soluble antioxidants. People that eat rice, people that eat uh, potatoes a lot and bread without substantial fat-soluble antioxidants, they tend to have great oxidative stress in their fat-soluble compartment and predispose themselves not just to gout, but also to, as I said, um, abdominal obesity, tendency to hypertension, tendency to heart attack, tendency to diabetes, and more. Good hydration is fundamental for all individuals with gout, um, and keeping the extremities from being cold is important. You, uh, ascorbic acid as a supplement is a valuable thing, or in vegetables and fruits, which should be eaten daily anyway. Anti-inflammatories clearly have a role. You need to be well hydrated to be taking naproxen or ibuprofen during a gouty attack, and both of these medications should be taken with food. In individuals that uh, traumatize their joints, as runners do, they may want to take an anti-inflammatory prophylactically before running if they're well hydrated. So someone with hypertension should be on calcium channel blockers or losartan as opposed to other ARBs or ACEs generally. The mainstay medication for managing gouty attacks is allopurinol. It is more efficient than the other medications. If you have a gouty attack, good hydration. You probably want to ice the joint and alternate with some heat and ice. This will increase circulation, but also keep the inflammation down. As I said, consider anti-inflammatories during a gouty attack. You may have to take an H2 block or a PPI um, to keep your acid in your stomach down while you're taking an anti-inflammatory to avoid a gastritis. Naproxen, 220 milligrams, two with food twice a day is the mainstay I suggest when you're well hydrated, or ibuprofen, 600 to 800 milligrams every eight hours with food when you're well hydrated. Indomethacin is not superior in very severe gout attacks um, or in ones that clearly in the past have not been able to be contained with non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Steroids can be very beneficial, particularly prednisone as a tapered dose or methoprednisolone as a tapered dose. Narcotics are very reasonable for a gouty attack, although it does not make sense to work, walk on a joint when it's painful, and sometimes narcotic, narcotics are abused in the sense of allowing a person to walk through a painful joint. Allopurinol, since it's a mainstay, let's talk about it. It is a xanthine oxidase inhibitor. So it is reasonable to check your genetics. In some countries, it is essential that they do this before we prescribe allopurinol. It, is, it has an HLA B5801 genetic marker. In those individuals, they should not be getting uh, allopurinol. You can look at your uh, a reference to this in Wikipedia to understand better. This is more consistent with individuals from the Han Chinese and Thai population. So if you're Chinese or Thai, we need to check for this genetic marker. 
Also, Koreans have, uh, with stage three chronic renal disease, we should be checking for this as well. In the event that you have an attack, we do not want to be giving allopurinol. We start it when you're not having an attack. If you're on allopurinol, have an attack, stop taking it, hold for two weeks, and resume it after the attack. Recommendations. This may be a wake-up call. You may have an underlying condition, we term metabolic syndrome, that needs to change to lower your risk of many other significant diseases and the suffering that go with those for yourself and your family. You may have to consider an alternative diet, a paleo legacy model is what I generally recommend. We can discuss this or you view this as a video and discuss it later. Consider gout as a symptom of a greater disorder is what I'm saying. Um, it, you may be predisposed to gout, it may be your primary disorder. One should always follow preventive measures of manage urine pH by diet if needed. We can discuss in other videos how to do this. Um, stop gout preventive medicines during an attack and resume them two weeks after attack. And we'll target a uric acid level for you of six to five if you have more than one gout attack. Otherwise, uh, it may be overdoing it. If you change your diet and you don't have an attack, I am more pleased that we're in the right realm because uric acid is a strong and beneficial antioxidant that otherwise it may not make sense to lower. By managing diet, using medications over the counter as naproxen sometimes and the prescription ones we write, and monitoring, I think we can keep your gut under control. If there's any questions or if you feel we're not doing that well, we need a referral to the rheumatologist.